Leo came to our studio uh, Thursday, South Broadway. I mean, we're finding a studio. Mm -hmm. And I had my, my, my jaw. It's in Yonkers. Yonkers. It's right, in, it's in, and my, my jaw was still wired shut. This is when you got signed. I heard, I heard about, about the story. story. This is when he knew he was. He, he came right behind and tried to clean up. So maybe three weeks later, when he, when he found out I was getting signed, but that time he was like, yo, I'll lace your pockets. I'll, I'll double what they gave you and lace your pockets. I'm like, nah, nah, I mean, because if you didn't see the beast. Let's discuss a concerning pattern. Those who attempted to expose Diddy and Jay-Z in the past are either silenced or dismissed as crazy. The late DMX was among these individuals. He supposedly tried to reveal Diddy's exploitation of artists and Jay-Z's ties with powerful groups like the Illuminati. Recently, Jaguar Wright spoke up in an interview, suggesting Jay-Z's actions might be even worse than Diddy's. There are alleged disturbing deeds by Jay-Z that remain untold. Why is Diddy publicly shamed while Jay-Z's alleged misdeeds aren't as known? Did DMX truly possess inside knowledge about Diddy and Jay-Z's unethical behaviors? What did Diddy witness while collaborating with these two? The ongoing revelations about Diddy are becoming increasingly bewildering by the day, but he's not the sole figure being exposed. Attention has shifted to his longtime associate, Jay-Z. Recent reports suggest that DMX was among the first within the industry to see through both Diddy and Jay-Z. In a surfaced interview, DMX mentioned Diddy exploiting his artists, and while some interpret his words as a metaphor for Diddy not fairly compensating his artists, others believe DMX meant it quite literally. DMX said, Despite the fact that I supported the locks, who eventually signed, they were a safer option. That's when Puff Daddy signed them. It was a mixed blessing because initially they were content being signed and happy about it. They were on the rise, things were going well financially, but then someone made changes, pushed them to adopt a more fashionable image, dressed them up in suits, and essentially had them write lyrics for him while claiming their publishing rights. In another interview, DMX revealed that initially, Diddy refused to sign him to Bad Boy, believing he wasn't marketable. However, when Diddy saw the offer from Def Jam, he pleaded for DMX to stay, promising to double the offer and enhance his financial situation. Yet, DMX didn't resonate with Diddy's approach, allegedly due to getting wind of unsettling activities happening behind closed doors at Bad Boy. A fan once mentioned how DMX talked about Diddy exploiting his artists, particularly Biggie. Initially, people thought DMX might have meant that Diddy was taking all of Biggie's earnings. However, considering the recent allegations against Diddy, nothing seems implausible now. Regarding DMX and Jay-Z, their history was complex. While Jay-Z publicly paid respect after DMX's passing, there were beliefs that X never fully trusted Jay. Allegedly, DMX felt Jay-Z was untrustworthy and didn't want others to rise in the industry. DMX even claimed that Jay interfered with his sixth album out of fear of competition, but Jay-Z never acknowledged this action. Interestingly, shortly after DMX's passing in April 2021, Jay-Z appeared on LeBron James's show. However, there's a crucial detail Jay-Z conveniently omitted, his involvement in a competitive game that allegedly disrupted DMX's progress. In 2004, Jay-Z assumed a prominent role at Def Jam Records, and according to DMX, that's when things changed. DMX had been representing Def Jam for a long time, releasing five successful albums between 1998 and 2003. Yet when Jay-Z took over, DMX revealed that Jay attempted to hinder his sixth studio album, Year of the Dog, again. DMX expressed his frustration, stating that everything was going well until the sixth album. Initially, Jay-Z assured him, you're good, finish the album, shoot the video. However, when it came to execution, Jay-Z suddenly seemed unaware and distant, causing confusion about how someone could listen to an entire album, select a single, shoot a video, and then suddenly claim ignorance. As per DMX, the whole situation unraveled because Jay-Z had a change of heart regarding retirement and aimed to clear his path before making a comeback. Jay-Z altered his plans about retiring and suddenly expressed interest in returning to the spotlight. 
Before re-entering the industry, he supposedly sought to remove any potential competition standing in his way. This decision led to a significant rift between him and X. DMX recognized the true motives behind Jay-Z's actions, eliminating competition, initially retiring, then removing DMX from the label, and now returning to rap again. This was the moment when DMX realized that Jay-Z's moves were solely self-centered, with no consideration for others if they didn't align with Jay's agenda. So, DMX departed from Def Jam and secured a deal with Columbia Records. However, there's more to why DMX hesitated to trust Jay-Z, and it's connected to Jay's associations with influential figures in the industry who hold substantial power. Both Jay-Z and DMX made significant impacts on the music and cultural landscape, but their approaches to the business differed greatly. Unlike Jay-Z, DMX consistently stayed authentic, openly criticizing how label owners tightly control artists. He refused to compromise his values for them, neither metaphorically or literally, standing firm against their grip. This new breed of rappers is paying DJs to promote their music, sucking up to record label executives excessively. DMX said, there's an overflow of such practices happening. I just want to be myself as an artist and let my music speak for itself. You shouldn't have to cozy up to these executives or engage in favors for them. I'm not into that. I provide the music and in return, I expect payment. Now, Jay-Z has been involved in these industry tactics right from the start. Over time, there have been accusations about him betraying people close to him. One such individual is Dame Dash a co-founder of Rockefeller Records, who publicly stated that Jay-Z got cozy with influential figures in the music industry and then turned his back on them. In 2021, Dame Dash sought to sell his shares in Rockefeller and revealed that Jay-Z offered him a mere $1.5 million to buy his stake. Dame felt disrespected, considering the offer too low. In response, he and his team attempted to sell Jay-Z's debut album, reasonable doubt as an nft he mentioned being offered a sum of money for his interest in reasonable doubt which he found disrespectful dame spoke to his cousin who knew a lawyer named ron sweeney suggesting that selling it as an nft might be a better option and discussed the potential benefits rockefeller subsequently filed a lawsuit against dame jay-z responded stating that he wasn't attempting to sell a portion of that particular project he faced the lawsuit due to allegations attempting to prevent it from happening, and then everyone involved seemingly disappeared. He said, I had to handle the lawsuit alone feeling frustrated about the situation. Dame observed how corporate figures attempted to manipulate the narrative. Even though the lawsuit concluded in 2022, Dame continued to speak out. He directly accused Jay-Z of betraying him for money. Dame suggested that influential figures in the music industry influenced Jay-Z to abandon their partnership for financial gain. According to Dame, this pattern is common. They pit one against the other, divide friendships, and conquer. Additionally, Dame began naming individuals involved. One person he called out was Lior Cohen, a significant figure in the music industry and a close friend of Jay-Z. Lior and Jay-Z have had a long-standing relationship, with Jay even referring to Lior as his mentor. Rumors suggest that Lior played a role for Jay-Z similar to what Clive Davis did for Diddy, if you catch my drift. Rumor has it that allegedly Diddy pleaded with Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records was established. This scenario implies Clive Davis acted as Diddy's mentor. Interestingly, both Diddy and Clive Davis seem to have a common pattern. Their artists mysteriously face unfortunate situations. Lior Cohen has been involved in various controversies, and Dame publicly accused him of intentionally using divisive tactics to pit black artists and influential figures against each other. What's bewildering is when Lior appeared on The Breakfast Club in 2018, he spoke about the opioid crisis and expressed sadness about DMX's struggles with substance use. However, when Charlemagne asked Lior why he continues supporting artists promoting drug culture despite awareness of the crisis, Lior straightforwardly stated that it's just how the business operates. He even mentioned that one of the biggest artists he had dealt with had serious drug problems. So that's all from today's video.
If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.